I would want to be in committed monogamous relationship. 1차 다부가 저는 맞는 것 같아요. 그럼 다처 다부제 아닐까? 1초 다부제 뭐 다부 1초제 그러면 너무 복잡하지 않을까요? I, I can't even handle him. At times, he is a man who is really passionate about me. Really, really passionate about me. 그왜정 때문에 산다는 소리 있잖아요. 그것 때문에 살것 같아요. Maybe I'll have a partner, but that's not the only person I have sex with. So. 아 저는 무조건 그 일부 일처제. Why do I need to be monogamous at this point? You know, uh, I require a lot more to have more and more partners, sexual partners. I may not agree with that. I don't agree with that. 저는 결혼하고 이혼하고 다시 다른 사람 만나고 결혼하고 이혼하는 걸 되게 당연한 거라고 생각을 해요. Just one, one man, one woman in a home. Yeah, for me, that for me is, is perfect. 여기 일부일처제를 현대에 만들어진 신화로 여기는 한 사람이 있습니다. 윈스턴 처칠 once famously said that he thought democracy is the worst possible form of government with the exception of all the others that have been tried. And I would adapt that and say that I think monogamy is the worst possible mating system, except for all the others. Many, many bird species, or in fact, most bird species are monogamous. It turns out that that's not the case. Very, very, very few are. The reality is that monogamy, one male, one female, as a means of reproducing, is actually quite unusual in the living world. It's even more rare among mammals. And in fact, and this is something that many people find rather shocking, it's rather rare in human beings too. That is, on the one hand, we are naturally interested in multiple sexual partners. Both men and women have that interest, okay? And the interest is based on the fact that both men and women can enhance what we call their fitness, their evolutionary success, by having multiple partners. If you were a, um, a Martian zoologist who came to Earth and looked at the human species, you would say, there's no question that human beings are not naturally monogamous. 오늘날 사람들은 일부일처제를 당연하게 받아들입니다. 그러나 대다수가 일부일처제를 따른 건 대략 만년 전으로 봅니다. 인류가 정착해 농경 생활을 하며 가축, 집 등을 소유하게 됐고 그 재산을 자식들에게 물려줬죠. 그러니 누구의 자식인지가 정확해야 했고 남편과 아내로 분명하게 구별되는 일부일처제를 선호하게 됐습니다. 인류의 역사를 대략 20만 년이라 볼때 만년 전 농경 문화가 가져온 변화는 비교적 최근에 나타난 현상이라 볼수 있습니다. 그렇다면 그 이전 인간의 조상들은 어떻게 짝을 짓고 살았을까요? 오래전 인간의 행동을 알기 위해 영장류 연구소의 도움을 받으려 합니다. 지구상의 유인원은 대표적으로 긴팔 원숭이, 오랑우탕, 고릴라, 보노보, 침팬지가 있습니다. 사람도 여기에 속하죠. Especially bonobos and chimpanzees are particularly close to human beings. The genetic similarity is over 98% and you sometimes wonder what this little difference can actually create, uh, which is surprising. And bonobos and uh, chimpanzees now serve as one of the important referential models for human evolution. Can you interpret their sound? Their... Uh, I believe I can. I'm not sure how good I am, but I think by experience... Yeah, you get a feeling of mm -hmm. what the calls mean. This call, for example, I guess this guy is a little bit uh, afraid of oh, being outside yes. here. 보노보는 인간 행동의 기원을 찾는 데 중요한 모델입니다. Bonobos are renowned for their sexual behavior. Everybody reads about it and everybody talks about it. 
보노보는 90분에 한 번씩 마치 인사하듯 성을 가리지 않고 섹스를 합니다. 자위도 구강성교도 하죠. 얼굴을 마주보고 섹스하는 인간 외의 유일한 종입니다. The big question here is, is the sex? Their penis and the testicles are, can be seen in size? Uh, testicle size is a pretty good predictor of the mating or the reproductive system of a species. <clears throat> large testicles are indicative of large ejaculates. It is an indicator for the promiscuous mating system and for sperm competition. These and bonobos, their promiscuous mating is the common. So females may mate with multiple males in a short interval. And then it's actually the sperm that competes. 이렇게 정자 경쟁이란 한 개의 난자와 수정하려는 여러 수컷의 정자가 경쟁하는 걸 말합니다. Male gorillas have very small testicles. 암컷을 차지하기 위한 수컷의 무기는 종마다 다릅니다. 고릴라처럼 직접 몸으로 싸워 경쟁을 할땐큰 고환보단 큰 몸집이 유리합니다. 그래서 고환은 덩치에 비해 작습니다. 암컷과 수컷의 몸집 차이를 보면 섹스 전략을 대략 가늠할 수 있습니다. 고릴라처럼 암컷과 수컷의 차이가 큰 경우 일부 다처입니다. 그러나 보노보처럼 암컷과 수컷의 몸집이 크게 차이 나지 않을 땐 서로 다수의 섹스 파트너가 있습니다. 수컷과 암컷의 크기가 같은 긴팔 원숭이 경우엔 일부 일처 짝짓기를 합니다. 그럼 인간은 어떨까요? 인간의 남녀 신체 차이는 보노보와 긴팔 원숭이 사이입니다. 일부 일처나 혹은 남녀 둘다 다수의 짝을 둔 복잡한 짝짓기를 했다는 해석이 모두 가능합니다. They are modestly a sperm competition species. Monogamy is a form, a common form, but it's not so, uh, yeah, so prominent. And in the biological sense, this is not really monogamy anymore. 인간에게만 보이는 특이한 점이 또 있습니다. Sexuality of women is much more mysterious in a number of ways. One of them is the phenomenon of what we call concealed ovulation. If you go to a zoo, for instance, and look at chimpanzees, a number of the females will periodically look really very strange. They'll have this an enormous reddish pink, sometimes orange, growth on their behinds. That can be really quite large, as big as a, a, a melon. This is natural. This is the way the females often signal ovulation. Well, human beings don't do anything like that, okay? Uh, we take that for granted, of course. Now, one has to ask, why is something so important kept so secret? Um, there are a number of interesting hypotheses, though, but if, in fact, their ovulation is concealed and secret and hidden. Their, quote, their male couldn't always be guarding her. And so they would have then the opportunity to sneak away with another male if they chose to. One of those mysteries, in addition to concealed ovulation, is female orgasm. Male ejaculation does involve more than just neurological things going on in the brain. There is actually material. Semen is transferred from inside the male body to out. Whereas, by contrast, insofar as a woman is experiencing it within her brain, there's nothing being used up. Women who are orgasmic are typically capable of having multiple orgasms. It's real, this is really a result of the fact that among many, indeed most animal species, if a female would be inclined, in fact, to mate with more than one male. Women evolutionarily establishing a, a situation, making it somewhat difficult so that the sperm have to compete with each other so that only the best man wins, if you will. That when we behave as a monogamous species, we are actually running counter. We are swimming upstream against the forces of evolution. Let me be clear, that does not mean that monogamy is a bad thing. Okay? I mean, there are many things that human beings do 
that are unnatural, but I think most of us would agree are really good, um, and that take a lot of work. Some of them are going to be still promiscuous, where both males and females will mate, and that's an accepted. Do you have any uh, evidence supporting uh, your idea? If you look at the canela of uh, northeastern Brazil, or you look at the arc of Paraguay, or the bari of Venezuela, there's tons of ethnography showing that even up until as late as 1970, they were a promiscuous society where the females and the males both made it outside the pair bond. What are the major factors determine the between the monogamy or and the promiscuous? The, it, it is adult mortality risk. Let's say uh, you have a good chance of dying before your children reach reproductive age. So what would the male do in the particular? What is his option? He'll also mate with others on the chance that he will have paternity with some of her children. And should he die or his social spouse dies, he will have children that are being taken care of by someone else. So he's buying life insurance by mating promiscuously, but he's also giving up paternity certainty. Now what about the female? Why would she do it? So she mates promiscuously in order so that if her, her social spouse dies, she has the call on multiple males to get resources for those children because they might be the father of her children. Do you think that both male and female have a, a promiscuous tendency equally? Absolutely, they do. You had the Na in China with the walking marriage, and it was the same thing. You had the longhouses, the men came in for different mating opportunities. The females mated with multiple men. I'm 27 摩梭人是母系社会二楼有大窗的房间是像我这种已经成年的女生用的。不过我们有走婚习俗不过到了中年以后
。作为少数民族摩梭人，逐渐成为中国社会的一部分。最近，走婚文化也逐渐消失了。大部分会选择结婚，估计我也会选择结婚的。数十万年동안인류의삶은고정불변한것이아니었습니다아마앞으로도그렇겠죠 Then what happens? In our the mating patterns. In fact, we're adapted to either or, mm -hmm. depending on context, mm -hmm. depending on adult mortality risk. The interesting part about the canella mm -hmm. and the bari, mm -hmm. when modern medicine came into these societies in the 1960s and 70s, mm -hmm. and they were inoculated against TB and dysentery, the extra pair matings went down mm -hmm. when adult mortality risk went down. So they flipped to monogamy. So it's up to us. No other non-human animal has that adaptability, and it's only in an animal that can manage that conflict of interest problem that you can flip between those two systems. 인간은 지구 위의 어떤 생명체와도 다른 독특한 섹스를 합니다. 인간은 인간만의 방식으로 섹스를 받아들였고 제도도 만들었죠. 지금 모두가 자연스럽게 따르는 일부일처제는 인간에게 남아있는 진화적 증거와 꼭 맞지는 않습니다. 하지만 인간은 충돌하는 욕망을 조절하고 더 많은 이들과 조화롭게 살아가는 지구 유일한 생명체입니다. 인간은 독특한 섹스를 통해 오늘의 세상을 만들었고 지금 우리는 그 빛나는 문명의 행성 위에 존재하고 있습니다. <목소리>